go. Hi everyone. Um, welcome to Center for Wildlife. We are in, uh, we're streaming live today from our um, office, which is um, a shed. Actually, it's a modified shed. Um, <laughs> so this is where our administrative um, team works. This is my little nook over here. Um, so we are, uh, many of you know that we're in the middle of a um, capital campaign um, to for a new facility in campus and we are almost there. Um, we've got $400,000 um, left to raise, but the building is about three quarters complete. Um, and the building will have expanded office space um, and also an expanded medical clinic and uh, outdoor amphitheater, a stone amphitheater, auditorium, classroom, um, so we can host a lot of programs once we're all through um, what we're all going through together right now. So we're streaming live um, from the show. Shelly says, go Kristen. Hi Shelly. Yay, Kristen. <laughs> and I have Gaia here with me, who's our non-releasable great horned owl. I do have to mention that inside um, the clinic, two of our educators are actually streaming um, to Google Classroom. So, um, to uh, a Rye Elementary today too. So that is also an option for teachers or um, people that are stuck at home. Um, we can do remote learning. And this is, this is our um, morning meeting with our wildlife ambassadors. So we'll get right into it. Um, hi Jennifer. Hi Jennifer. Sarah, our um, community engagement specialist is with us today too. And she'll be helping um, to say hi and field um, questions and comments as well. So. Definitely comment. This is meant to be interactive, um, and we have been wondering to ourselves why we haven't done this before. <laughs> Liam and Ari say hello. Hello. Um, okay, so today we're focusing on great horned owls, and um, I said this is Gaia, and she is a female great horned owl. She lives um, as an ambassador at the Center for Wildlife. And we, uh, we actually treat, for those of you maybe not as familiar with our work, we treat about 2,500 injured and orphaned wild animals that are brought to us um, from about a 100 mile radius of York, Maine. And we treat about 190 different species. Um, and so our goal is always to release animals back into the wild but unfortunately, sometimes animals have um, permanent injuries. Do you have a question? We're there? just gonna greet yes. folks because folks are good. joining on. Yeah. So hi, Molly and Brayden and Kristen. Good morning, Al, Caroline and Laurel. Good morning, Carolyn. And wow, we have folks all the way from Arlington Heights, Illinois Yay. popping in. And six kiddos joining from Portsmouth, which is amazing. There actually are two questions. Okay. Um, the first one is what do great horned owls eat? Yeah. Which is a cool one. And the second one, and I love this one because we get this asked a lot right now, is that I've heard owls have long but super skinny legs like sticks. Is that true? Awesome. <laughs> All right. So let's get let's get into this. Those are great questions. Um, so Gaia was brought to us. Unfortunately, she has a permanent shoulder injury. That's why she lives with us. She was found at the base of a tree. Um, her family had built, you know, the parents not built. They were using a nest in the tree, um, raising their young. The whole family fledged to the summer hunting grounds to practice um, and build up skills in hunting. And unfortunately, Gaia was left behind at the base of the tree. You guys can notice her wing droops a bit on this side. Um, when we got her in, um, we did an x-ray and saw that um, she had a permanent shoulder injury that happened um, in the nest. It may have happened accidentally by one of her siblings. It happened very early on and so her wing grew deformed so unfortunately there was no way of, um, of fixing her wing. So that's why she lives with us in Sanctuary. She lives with another great horned owl named Galileo. Um, they are a pair and they also help to foster any um, baby great horned owls that we might get in um, to the clinic. So let's take a look at those legs and feet. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. She's actually 
pretty relaxed right now, so she's kind of, instead of sitting straight up and kind of using her camouflage, um, she's just kind of, kind of um, relaxing right now. But you can see those very serious talons. Um, so I guess if you want to pop, pop the answers in the comments, the question about what she, um, what she eats, she's got a very sharp, curved, hooked beak and those really strong talons or claws. And her feet are 100 pounds, um, or sorry, 300 pounds PSI. So um, that's how much pressure she has in her, um, in her feet and her talons. So uh, do you guys think that she eats fruit? Or <laughs> do you think she, she flies through the field and eats strawberries or blueberries? What do you guys think? Those are such good questions about what she eats. Um, does that, does it, can anyone put in the comments what you think she eats? She, well, folks, well, I'd like to hear her make a sound from Brayden, which is tricky because she only talks when she wants to. I can do their call. Absolutely. And Gaia, Barbara Borsa would like you to know that you're gorgeous. Yes, she is. Okay, so um, primarily our great horned owls eat lagomorphs, which are um, cottontails or snowshoe hares. And they also eat um, mice and rats. And then um, one of their favorite um, prey is skunk, actually. <laughs> so um, you are what you eat. And a lot of times when we admit uh, great horned owls into the clinic, um, those of us who are seasoned, we can smell that there is a great horned owl in the intensive care room before we even see them. Um, so birds don't have the traditional great sense of smell that we um, you know, how mammals and other, um, other animals rely on um, their sense of smell. Owls really rely on their hearing and their eyesight, which we can talk about a little bit later. Um, so they don't really smell skunks and they're not really bothered by it. And um, Gaia can eat three to four mice a day um, as babies. Great horned owlets can actually eat six to eight mice in one day, one evening. Um, actually they'll eat around the clock, but, um, so if they get, if they get a skunk, they're actually good and they don't have to expend energy and hunt over and over and over again. So they're good for like three days. We call it the family pack meal. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of the, the best way to, to do it. Yeah. So if you're conserving energy as a wild animal, you actually want to be able to take the largest, um, size prey that you can because, um, you'll take that effort to do that instead of hunting over and over and over again. And we'll say hi to Nolan and Reagan. We have someone watching from Minnesota. Um, hello from Daniela. And also uh, Jessica Stanley is super excited because owls are their favorite, they said. Yeah. Emmeline would like to ask, um, why do owls have pointy ears? So maybe we can do the top to the I bottom to show it. the pointy quote unquote ears and those long legs. Yeah, and so we had a question about sound too. So mm -hmm. this is really cool right now. Um, great horned owls are sitting on nests. They are vocal because the um, parents, male and female, mom and dad, are communicating with each other about food. Um, but they they do a lot of calling in late December, early January. Um, so maybe some of you recognize this call. It sounds like. <laughs> Okay. She says it was nice. She's like, that was moderate. That, that was, was, that was I, moderate. I give it a B plus. <laughs> She's so funny. When oftentimes folks will ask if they're calling, if the owl comes in only if they have a good call. And what we like to tell people is no, try it, do what you can, because they may come in just to look and see what's making that strange noise. And another fun fact about the calls, I think this is funny with humans, is that the male great horned owl is it does actually have a deeper voice when right, they call, yeah. which so, is so cool. Yep, yeah, male and female have um, higher pitches. So mm -hmm. when you're listening out there, um, listen for those pitches because you can tell if it's a, a girl or a boy or male or female. So um, let's start with these tufts up here. So first of all, too, take a look at her camouflage. I'm going to zoom in. It might be a little bumpy, folks, but hold on because it's we, worth the ride. Okay, that was think too close. Okay. 
She's letting her, Sarah know she about says, her personal Excuse bubble. Excuse me? <laughs> Six feet. <laughs> yeah. um, so if you think about the bark of trees around here, she has um, amazing camouflage for blending into trees. Um, we'll notice that her feathers are very soft and rounded, which we'll get into that as well. So um, those tufts on top of her head are actually not her ears. Those are feathers um, and they are part of her camouflage. So if she were sitting in a tree, um, blending in with her coloring and sitting up straight and those two tufts were up, they would actually look like sticks or leaves. Um, so they help her blend in as part of her, um, you know, being a predator, she wants to be silent and sneak up on everyone. So that's actually just part of her camouflage. But owls have um, what's called a facial disc. So if you guys see the shape of her feathers, <clears throat> goes around like a disc. You're being so patient. Thank you. <laughs> so good. Um, and her ears, we'll see if she'll let me do it. And she'll tell me if she doesn't want me to, but um, she's like, yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Kristen so, is the only one that can do that, by the way, too. <laughs> I uh, actually got to work with Gaia. Um, we knew that her injury was permanent when she was a baby, um, so I've been able to work with her from when she had her downy fuzz on her head, which is very sweet. Um, so, so her ears are actually like giant slits that go, um, that go down the side of her head. So if I pulled back the feathers right here, she's, Ooh, she's so close to letting you do it. She says, maybe, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> we won't push it. Um, the slit something... is about the size of the coloration. Yeah, yeah, so the, the sit, slit um, is about that big. Like giant ears underneath there. And... So close. <laughs> She's teasing. <laughs> yeah. We never want to push um, anything that our friends are not comfortable with. So right. her little mouth opening tells me, eh, I don't think I'm up for that today. I'm not enjoying <laughs> yeah. this. Um, and, and Owl's ears are also asymmetrical, so um, one's positioned higher up and then the other one on the other side is positioned um, farther down so that when owls are um, flying, they're turning their heads and they can actually triangulate sound to pinpoint where prey is on the forest floor or in a field if that's where they're hunting. So giant ears and that's where their ears are tricky because uh, like long-eared owls and short-eared owls um, were named before scientists really knew where their ears were so they were named for those tufts on top of their head and those were called ears but they're actually not their ears can we do a quick how long is their wingspan Alina would like to know yep yeah. so um, an, a great horn owl's wingspan is about four feet um, they have instead of having a wide um, very large wingspan like our turkey vultures and our eagles do um, these guys are adapted more for silent flight so although they have a huge body they're actually one of um, the largest animals on this entire continent one of the largest owls um, on this entire continent um, their wingspan is not super huge um they they have more of rounded um feathers for silent flight and if you guys can take a look that's a good time to talk about that so at the edge of gaia's feathers is a comb like fringe oh can't i'm not can't on that wing. i have to okay. see it on the other wing yeah are you gonna let me show <laughs> maybe we'll see it that's all right. Well, we're going to be, we have a other owls. Fluted we'll edge. Be, it's called a fluted edge. Yeah. And um, the shape of their feathers, you can see that Gaia's feathers are very soft and round. And um, this is that comb like fringe right there. If I zoom in, I'm having a hard time zooming yeah, in. Yeah, no so problem. I don't want to. I don't want to get in uh -huh. your space either, lovely. Um, so that allows the airs to the air to move completely um, through their feathers so that they can fly completely silently. And that also makes sense for them because if they have such great hearing um, and they are if they were flying through the air and they had noisy feathers just like a crow or a turkey, um, then they would 
um, then that would impact them being able to hear where their prey is. So it helps them um, with their silent flight and their great hearing to be able to sneak up on prey, but it also that silent flight allows them to use their ears while they're flying. If they had noisy wings, um, that would defeat the purpose of them having really great hearing. Awesome. Let's take a moment for some rapid fire questions Ooh, and also it. greeting. I love it. First one from Andrew. Are there any owls that hang upside down like bats? Not that I know of. Great and question, Andrew. I love that. Michelle was wondering if they eat rats. Definitely. Absolutely. They do eat rats. And Brianna mentioned that they eat rodents. Alana said mice. Yeah. Anna in kindergarten says that she thinks she might eat fish. Mm. Mm. Sometimes they might venture down to things. Mm -hmm. Karen Young, we want to thank you so much for donating. Um, we really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Ariel Doubleday is wondering if this owl is also called a hoot owl. Yes, I think it is. Excellent. Yep, when people say hoot owls. And when we're... Um, Watching movies, then it's like kind of a spooky scene. Yep. Um, listen for that great horned owl call. Perfect. Emily wants to know if she can still fly. She has limited flight. So um, our ambassadors that live with us that are disabled, they have um, special enclosures with ramps and ladders and things um, for them to be able to get safely around. So she can almost do like long jumps and use her wings um, for balance, but she cannot sustain flight, and that's why she lives with us. Awesome. Great question. Benjamin and Gabby want to know, when do they talk? Yeah, so these guys actually will start talking in the afternoon. We hear them a lot, so like and around two like, or three. Yeah, three or four, yeah. Um, so we think of owls as being strictly nocturnal, but our great horned owls are the top predators in their food chain. So they're like, yeah, cloudy days. If I feel like talking, I'll talk. Right. Um, dusk, dawn. They tend to almost be more crepuscular, in the, um, which is um, active at dusk and dawn. That's a fun little vocab word for you guys. Um, and, yeah, they'll start calling in the afternoon, also early morning. Um, they do certainly hunt in the middle of the night, especially when they're feeding prey. But they are a, a species that's active during dusk and dawn. And they talk a lot um, during that mating um, season, which is around December, early January for us here in New England. And then right now they're actually sitting on eggs. Um, so in our region, um, they will be start incubating eggs really in uh, end of January, early February. What do you see? They sit on eggs for about 28 to 35 days um and then so there'll be little baby great horned owls starting so very soon um elsie aged five is yeah. asking how much she weighs and is she as heavy as a cat um do you does yeah is that your guess that she's as heavy as a cat she thinks so yeah i love it so um she actually guy weighs about four and a half pounds mm -hmm. so she has tons of feathers for insulation and that's both heating and cooling um, but let's, let me, she will let me do this. Hi, <laughs> She's Hi. like, what? So only now am I actually touching her body. Wow. So her feathers go down past my second knuckle. And she also has hollow bones, which allow her, um, to fly. And the hollow bones, which is really cool with most of our birds, um, their respiratory system is different from ours. So... They are very efficient with um, getting oxygen from the air. And when a bird takes in a deep breath, um, it actually travels through their respiratory system and, and the air goes through their bones. And they have seven different air sacs um, throughout their body, which um, air traveling through the bones help to fill up those air sacs. You can think of them almost as balloons. So they've got, they're flying around with, um, you know, hollow bones, air sacs that are like balloons, so that helps them to be buoyant and fly. So they are different from us in awesome. that way. Awesome. We'd like to say hi to Caitlin and hi to Jonah. Hello. And thank you, Barbara, for donating. Chris Robinson says that Madeline says hi. Hi. Denise Stanley says thank you. Yes. Um, and Chris Robinson, this owl's name is Gaia. And this owl is not her pet. She is a non-releasable um, wildlife ambassador at the Center for Wildlife. And so she lives with us in Sanctuary. Right, Miss Gaia? Yes. You're so good. So Gaia helps. Um, she's part of our wildlife ambassador team, um, which go 
and do almost 400 environmental education programs at schools, libraries, senior centers, nursing homes each year to talk about their species and teach people about ecology and how our health is connected to wildlife and environmental health. Do you know how far owls can see? Chris Robinson would like to know. And wow. Amelia and Frederick are loving this, they say. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, so actually, I, I guess I really don't know uh, as in terms of like feet or miles, um, but I do we know. We can guess. Oh, you know what? You can't reach the gear. Hold on yeah. one second. I have to read. I, I know. I'm props here. I can get them. You, you got them? Okay. Yeah. Well, Kristen gets yeah, those. Like, nah. <laughs> they say that an eagle can see roughly, I know, Gaia, I'm backing away, um, a mouse from one end of a football field to the other. But they're really guesstimates, I think. Yeah. So I think you're right to say we're not yeah. sure. And I mean, Claire's do... next question that goes along with this is, can Gaia see in the dark? Yeah. So, hi, Robin. So a couple um, really cool things about owls' eyes. So... We talked about their hearing and how large their ears are and how they're asymmetrical, which helps them triangulate sound. Um, but an owl's eyes are very large. Um, they're actually, well, you can see that because you're looking at her. <laughs> but um, if we had the same size eyes proportionate to the rest of our body, this is how large our eyes would be. So there are eyes are, um, you guys want me to keep this on? For Go the for rest it. Of the... It looks fantastic. <laughs> can't, Work I can't it. Really see <laughs> Glad. See, I, I can't see as well as an owl can. <laughs> um, so they have incredible eyesight. Um, their eyes, I like to, to say, are kind of like one of their investments um, for, for hunting. So without their eyes, it's like, if we don't have a car or a way to get around, we can't get to the store to get all of our resources. So that's kind of like what an owl's eyes are for them. That's what helps them um, find their food along with their hearing. Um, so Gaia, when she blinks, if you guys um, just pay attention as we're going through, when she blinks, she's got a top eyelid and a bottom eyelid. And then she also has a third eyelid, which is a nictitating membrane. So their eyes are definitely very important parts of their body. It's an important feature on their body. And like I said, it's very large. A third of their skull, they say. A third say. of their skull. She's like, girl, you look great. <laughs> That's so great. We're going to do a couple more rapid fire because I, I want to make sure folks get a yeah. chance to get in there. Marcus would like to know how sharp are their claws or talons. Mm -hmm. very, very sharp. sharp. We've got welding gloves on, mm -hmm. um, very, very sharp. Nolan very would powerful. like to know how long they might live. Um, so in the wild, great horned owls have been tracked living um, really up till about 25 years um, in captivity. That can be more like 35 mm -hmm. years. So Chris Robinson's question was how do owls pick up their food? I'm just gonna answer that one because it goes along with what Kristen was talking about with their wings because of the shape of their wings and their strength, they're able to pick up food with their talons and carry it off. Brianna says she never knew that they ate skunks. <gasps> Bailey's watching all the yeah. way from Florida. Hi, Hi Bailey. Bailey. We miss you. Oh, Bailey, <laughs> we miss you. Lily, age nine, would like to know how old this owl is, and are you able to look at them and know their age? She has a pony, and the horse dentist knows her age by her teeth, which is a great thing to know. Oh, I love it. Um, so Gaia came to us in 2012. Um, so she, and she was a baby when she came in. So she is um, going on eight, nine, eight years old. Just turn eight. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, and yes, well, we can tell whether an owl is a first year bird because all of the primary wings, which are primary feathers all the way down the wing, are uniform, so they're brand new feathers, basically. Um, and then when we look at feathers under black lights, we can actually tell if they've molted because um, they're not completely uniform, brand new. It's like when we look at our toy after a little while, we can tell it's Some a little paint big. is rubbed yeah. off and yep. <laughs> yeah. But, Flat tail um, here and there. Beyond that, except for taking blood, which we don't like to put our patients through, um, it's, it is difficult to know whether um, an owl is um, is older than two years old or just a first year bird. Mm -hmm. We can tell um, with other species by the color of their eyes, the color of their feathers, um, 
like our peregrine falcons, it really takes them about six or seven years to get their full mature plumage. Same thing with um, gannets and bald eagles. Great and red questions. tails, yeah. Um, breed and owls are active mostly at night, but also we mentioned crepuscular, which is during dawn and dusk. Meredith was wondering if owls imprint Meredith, in fact, they do. Mm -hmm. Yana, great question. Um, how does the owl turn its head? Not all the way around, how she asked, but close to all the way around. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have props. Yeah. So um, the closest to my fingers here is a great horned owl skull, and um, the one next to that is a snowy owl skull. So you'll notice that the, uh, the eye sockets are about the... A third of the size of the entire skull and they also have the what's that called it? sclerotic Thank ring you, sclerotic ring it's one of my favorite words um there so that um that ring keeps their eyes kind of locked um straight forward in their heads and so that means that where we can roll our eyes you know up and down side to side all around um their eyes are actually locked straight forward in their heads um and the size and shape of their eyes has to do with um, them being able to turn their heads like that and see at night and yeah. see at night so um that size being more of a tube a giant tube instead of um a, like a ping pong ball shape um allows them to have a lot more cones um and cells um that pick up light differently than um than our eyes do and they can also see into the um, ultraviolet spectrum so when mice are um, or rodents are running through the forest floor um, and they are scared they actually urinate while they're running and for an owl it's almost like putting a black light or it's exactly like putting a black light on um, you know something where it's picking up um, things like that so um, so for an owl they're seeing trails and maps that lead them directly to their food, to their food which is so cool so oh, Madeline more rapid fire more love rapid it. fire we it. got it i do this too so fun. right you guys just want to be in our shed all day thank you please <laughs> yeah. so madeline wanted to know if it was your pet um but i think she may have already had that question answered so no gaia is not a pet um she does live here at the center for wildlife as a wildlife ambassador um and she lives here in sanctuary because she can't be released melissa uh says that reagan was one Wondering if owls blink and Kristen just discussed they do and they actually have three eyelids instead of two which is yet another superpower um, Meredith age five is wondering how much she does eat during the day and here she gets about three mice a day um, depending upon the season but out in the wild again like Kristen said it would depend upon what do you see up there it would depend upon what she was um, if she was feeding babies or anything like that Ooh, here's a great question and relating it to their chickens hunter and henry want to know if owls lose their feathers like other birds do and molt because their chickens do i love that question right answer is yes and they um they take advantage of really late spring early summer to molt because they're not using a lot of energy just to keep themselves warm they have extra energy in the um, spring summer and fall because of the temperature outside so they take the energy that they would use from um, keeping themselves warm or even migrating to replacing all their feathers. Awesome uh, Melissa Ann says, thank you for doing this for the community. Thank you, Aww. Melissa Ann. Molly was wondering how many eggs they may hatch. Yeah, I love that. So, um, so this is Great Horned Owl nesting season, and um, they typically lay one to three eggs, and their clutch size is usually two. Um, so you could have older parents that are in a habitat that have tons of resources they're used to doing all this you could just it could be dependent on the season the weather yeah parent level pro <laughs> parent level pro can raise three um otherwise it's usually one to two that will actually fledge from the nest christina b would like to know where she sleeps yeah so she um so so owls don't really sleep usually the way that we kind of think of like laying down and snoozing Although I'll take that back for the eastern screech owl, and you'll have to or tune the baby into owls, that. Yeah, yeah. The babies. <laughs> um, but they they would roost in a tree. Um, so these guys don't make their own nests. Um, they would use the nests of a crow or a red-tailed or red-shouldered hawk 
um, or they would use a tree cavity. So they kind of, um, and she rests with Ga um, Galileo. They have a platform that would mimic um, where they would be in a tree cavity and that's where they, um, they rest during the day. Owen would like to know where her nose is. Um, so she has, she's got lots of feathers that are kind of covering it. Bristles. But, yeah. She says, I don't, <laughs> you don't like you having your nose touched yeah. like that, Owen. So she's the same way. But yeah. underneath those feathers, like Kristen was just trying to point out, there's are, little um, nares. Nares, which are the equivalent of a human's nostrils. Awesome question. Right? You guys are oh, great. Aren't they great? The questions <laughs> yesterday were amazing, too. Quentin in fourth grade says thank you and that he's looking forward to tomorrow's thank animal. Thank you guys for tuning in. It means a lot to yeah. us. And Parker Simon would like to know um, if they can turn their heads all the way around. We yeah. started with the yeah, eyes. I started and... with that. Sorry, I can, I can No, that's okay. I think we're balancing forever. our rapid fire questions and all <laughs> that stuff, too. Yeah. So, um, so we were talking about how their eyes can't roll around, so they can't look back and forth, and they don't have great peripheral vision. There so, goes the um, nictitating membrane, if you guys caught nice. it. Nice. But um, if you guys feel the back of your necks, um, those bones back there, those are our vertebrae, and we have seven of those. But owls actually have 14, so they have twice as many little bones in the back of their um, neck that can, um, that can slide so that they can turn 270 degrees. Um, so if we keep our shoulders still and don't cheat and crane our shoulders, we can go about 180 degrees, but owls can turn all the way backwards and then a little bit farther, so 270 degrees. They also have a wider um, cavity for their vocal cords and their trachea and um, esophagus so that um, when they do turn like that, things don't cut off airflow. Isabella, age 10, and this is a great um, comparison, is how smart are owls? Are they brighter than a pigeon? So we, we actually like to think that um, they're just multiple um, intelligences. So all of our species we find everyone that we interact with um, are so brilliant for the type of food they're eating, um, the habitat that they're living in, how to evade predators. And so pigeons can actually fly almost as well as peregrine falcons. They can do bar barrel rolls, they can do, um, you know, things that our um, own fighter jets in our country are modeled after. So pigeons are actually very smart as far as flight, evading predation, their brains have to work very quickly to fly as fast as they do and switch gears. Um, switch owls it. have a different intelligence um, where their intelligence is always being on alert, using great hearing, using the um, their eyesight, being able to, I think, being able to see like a black light is a superpower. So that's an awesome question, but yeah. I would have to answer that... Um, all of them are so brilliant in their own ways. No, oh, um, two things. One, Asher and Charlie are loving it. Thank you, Asher and Charlie. Yeah. Um, and they want to know if this type of owl eats other owls. They do, and they actually eat whatever they want at this size and age. Nicole wants to know, she's four years old and wants to know how owls clean themselves. Oh, so owls preen, um, just like other birds do. Um, some of our birds like... Um, being out in the you know in the rain and puddles and going into the vernal pools and taking baths our owls really are not into that because their feathers remember are very soft and round and those are not um as great for water repellent as some of our other species but theirs are really good for that silent flight through the forest um so she would actually just take her beak and run hello she says it's warm <laughs> It just turned down the heater. Yeah. So um, you saw that, the sort of panting, it's called a gular flutter. She gets a little warm because she's so well insulated. It's like wearing a big down jacket. So we take our cue from her and and do that. Um, more rapid fire, if you it. don't mind. Has no. she ever had an egg? Ooh, I don't know if she's ever had an egg. She hasn't. She hasn't? Yeah. No. Um, Andrea donated. Thank you so much. Awesome, you guys. Addie and Emma, um, does she lose her feathers? She does. She molts, just like our other birds. Sharon Kelly wonders if owls can see in color or just black and white. I, I'm, I'm going to answer as a true, well, this true scientist question mm -hmm. of 
that's kind of all in theory. So all we know is that they see very differently than we do and they can see into different spectrums than we can. So I would answer that with yes, most likely, and way more than we can see. Different um, colors, yeah. Different from ours. Gavin, age four, is wondering how strong an owl can get. Um, the answer to that is very strong. Kristen mentioned her feet. There's so, um, takes over 30 pounds of pressure um, to take her if we were to try and remove her toe if she were to be gripped on to something it takes over 30 pounds of pressure to do that and they fly so beautifully it's just fantastic um fern nolan and reagan and kittery say thank you so much Aww, um oh liam aged eight wants to know where he can learn more about wildlife rehabilitation oh i love that um so if you go on uh inland fisheries and wildlife or new hampshire fish and game whatever your state agencies um websites are. They have a lot of information about um, securing your license to be able to do work like this, but um, a lot of our staff have backgrounds in mines in wildlife ecology. Um, several are in zoology, biology, environmental science, so um, really learning about um, the species that are in our region, we have about 350 um, species of, um, of wildlife in our region. And then there's all the plants and the trees and the soil types and how it all works together, including how we are connected to that. It's just a really great place to start. And I actually brought a book out here because I wanted to Ooh, I can come over share it with you guys. You want me to flip it over to the front? I, yeah. That way she's not adjusting. Yeah. Um, so we want to start sharing some of our favorite resources with you guys, too. So this is New England Wildlife, and it was written in part by um, a professor, Marco Yamasaki, who um, has worked through UNH. I actually was honored to um, do a couple of field trips with Marco um, while I was at UNH, but um, it's just a really great breakdown of the species that we have in New England, um, very simple territory, distribution, nesting, what they eat, um, the type of habitat they like. It's about one page for each um, species. So, so many great, really great resources. Yeah. Um, Addie and Emma would like to know, does she chew her food? So she actually tears her food. So we can think of her feet and her beak as being her fork and knife. And believe it or not, when we have um, baby great horned owlets in the clinic, they actually eat um, mice whole, even when they're babies. Gobble so them down. Depends on the size of the prey. And that's just a good thing to note. Um, sometimes you guys have probably heard people put out rodenticide. Um, and that's certainly a reason why some of our owls and hawk species are struggling in our region. Um, so if we think about if Gaia... And Galileo, if they were wild parents and they had three babies that they were feeding, those three babies were eating eight mice a day um, or day night. Um, that's 24 rodents every day that are being um, taken um, from a habitat, which helps to balance populations. Obviously, if there are too many rodents, um, that the prey species would end up starving or dying of disease. But if there are too many rodents, that can also spread disease to us as humans, too. So we always say, instead of putting out rodenticide, you should probably put out an owl um, box. And those plastic owls? or Yeah, an owl box. Um, and leave standing oh. trees, snags in your yard if they don't pose a safety habit. Because promoting owls and our natural predators to live in your ecosystem is a much safer way um, to keep everything balanced. Absolutely. And Evelyn, age five, is wondering if she has any other friends besides Kristen, who is one of her friends. She does live <laughs> with Galileo, um, who's her boyfriend, and they are a bonded pair, that's for sure. Casilla wants to know if how they drink water. They drink water. They mainly oh, really get a lot cute. of fluid. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. They mainly get their fluids from their prey. Yeah. Um, however, they can drink water just like a regular bird drinks water if if they need to. They, we have seen them do it, and it's like teeny tiny little yeah, sips. Yeah, the littlest really bits. Cute. Oh, Clara Simon said that she's thinking of getting an owl house, and does that help? Yay! Absolutely. Definitely. As we lose um, older, mature forests, we start to lose 
the natural habitats that these guys would nest in. So owl boxes are awesome. And that's probably a great thing that people can do together. If you're stuck in your house, maybe we can actually post a link. We'll do a um, link to get the, the, to build. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Victoria Spanswick was wondering if Matt or Matthew would like to know if owls really have the long legs. Like people say they do. If you try and reach up, can you find her hip, Kristen? It's so way a leg. We call these their pants. And these are pantaloons. Pantalones. <laughs> Very <laughs> nice pant. Oh, she says, "Don't touch uh, yeah. my pants." So her her hip, hip is, is up right there. Here. Yeah. So if she and keep in mind her leg is bent. Um. So her knee is back yeah, here. Yeah. Way back there. So it is. They do have extremely long legs. Um. And again, such thick feather covering that when you see them without feathers, you go, "Whoa, that's strange." Uh, for James, there is a purpose for their great horns or the feather tufts on top of their heads. Um, they definitely um, use them to let us know how they're feeling. Like her having them down like that means she's nice and calm right now. She's mm -hmm. giving me the look. Um, but if she also wants to uh, blend into the trees, um, as Kristen mentioned before, we're definitely able to have her look like a little tree with those branches on top. I just want to address to the pet question because we do get that a lot. Um, so I certainly have always loved wildlife and animals. Um, and I feel so honored to have been able to find this job and do this work for wildlife in our community. Uh, but because I love wildlife so much, I only want them to be wild. Um, I want them to be able to live free in the forest and um, in the field or, you know, ocean, pond, lake, wherever their natural habitats are. And when we have um, an animal who's permanently disabled and we're considering um, that they have to stay with us instead of being released, it's actually kind of heartbreaking. We feel honored and lucky to have this bond. Um, and they do live with us in sanctuary, but Gaia's enclosure is a large outdoor enclosure. It's larger like, than this office. It's larger than this office, which is shared by four people. Um, and we put rock walls and trees and everything to help them feel like they live in their natural habitat. We also establish a relationship so they feel comfortable being on the glove and doing education programs, but we don't make them do tricks. You know, I don't, I don't even try to pet her or anything like that. So we definitely, yeah. So like when folks ask for if they can make calls or do that, we really try and let them be settled. Alex Wessels is watching Hi, Alex. and Good Addie nice Miller you. too. Hi Addie. And one of our final questions, Miss Molly is wondering, do they carry any diseases? So, um, so our owls can, carry diseases just like people can. Um, I think one of the biggest risks, risks is through their um, feces that they can have salmonella in there. Um, so there's not a lot of zoonotic... <laughs> She's offended. Yeah, <laughs> she was like, please. Um, there's not a lot of zoonotic diseases um, that can, you know, jump from um, birds just from breathing on us or anything like that. We certainly do. We treat 190 different species that can all carry something different. They're all dealing with, you know, just like we have good bacteria and we have normal bacteria that live with us. Um, so we do gloves, we wash hands. Um, during this pandemic at the center, we've actually been um, a little bit relieved that we have been practicing um, disinfecting and sanitization and, um, you know, our normal practices, our best practices, which is part of the reason why we can even stay open um, the way that we are. We've checked with the CDC and state epidemiologists and because of our practices, um, just with shifting gears and protocols, um, we've been able to stay open so far. Um, so so yeah, every, every wild animal can carry something. We definitely should be careful and wear gloves and um, clean and, and protective equipment, but um, there's not a risk of something jumping from her to me. Colin, age seven, loves this and thinks an owl would win any staring contest. He I says. agree. <laughs> yeah. He's wondering how often owls blink. That depends, I think, on the weather and what they're doing. Sometimes they'll blink to show um, dominance or if they're upset or anything like that. They do have three eyelids, so they blink a little oh, bit more <laughs> than we do. Um, 
and she's just wonderful. Oh, Celeste says she's so beautiful. So are you, Aww. Kristen. This is a wonderful to watch. Hi, Celeste. Um, and thank you, Amy Wells, for donating. That's amazing. We can't thank you guys enough for yeah. the donations. It's incredible. Good to stop on that for a second. We are um, we are we have received no state or federal funding, and we're actually a smaller um, to medium now uh, size nonprofit. And um, we have just eight full-time staff, and obviously um, we're wondering what this will bring um, for us as far as impact for funding. So um, we are so grateful for those that are doing what you can to um, keep keep us going um, during this unstable time. So thank you all so much for that. And if you, oops, sorry, yeah, if you guys want to go to our website to learn more about it, because there's so many different ways to donate. Mm -hmm. You can go to www.thecenterforwildlife.org. We'll put it in the comments. Um, and yeah, we can catch up with you guys tomorrow yeah. uh, for another uh, Facebook Live and morning meeting with ambassadors. And we are just so grateful for you guys joining us. Thank you all. Yeah. We've had so much fun. You say bye, Gaia. Remember to listen for the... <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>